Chelsea, you famously dumped your Nikon D850 for the Sony a7R III. Hey, look at me. You've been the best camera I've ever had, D850. Two weeks before the Sony a7R IV came out. And I was pumped. I ordered it right away. You and did. I love it. But, but you don't want it. So what's going on? <laughs> okay, there's a lot that I like about it. I was really excited when the a7R IV came out because they improved the body. They put a lock on the exposure compensation wheel, which was something I was hitting all the time. They upped the megapixels. How could that be bad? It went from 42 to 60. You make a lot of good arguments. Yeah, it sounded perfect. And you got one and I started shooting with it. And I decided that I like the a7R III better. Like if they were the same price, you would choose the a7R III. If you wanted to give me that for free, I wouldn't want it. I like mine more. And, I, and you were asking me, well, why do you feel this way? And Tony, I went and I Tony Northrup this and I did testing and numbers because I know feelings are not going to translate to our viewers yeah so i'm backing it up and i i think i can change your mind actually okay give it a shot wait <laughs> right, but first i want to change your minds because valentine's day is coming up and i think you should get our how-to photography book called stunning digital photography we're going to give it to you on sale for 31 percent off why 31 percent that's like only 69 percent of the original price so the coupon code is going to be love 69 to get 31 percent off of our number one selling photography book because if you want to spend a couple thousand dollars on a camera you should at least spend 10 bucks on learning how to take photos or six dollars and 90 cents i guess after the coupon yeah here's why i'm not switching because when i started using the a7r4 i had this feeling like everything was taking longer the buffering was taking longer i'd load the photos onto my computer that would take longer and then i'd be editing my photos in lightroom or photoshop and that would also take longer mm -hmm. i'm not a patient person and so what i did was i put Sony's best memory card and an SD card. And um, I measured the time it took for 10 photos to buffer in both the a7R4 and the a7R3. And the a7R4 took 10 seconds for the buffer to clear. And the a7R3, I mean, it still took time. It took seven seconds, but that's just 10 photos. So you bring up a good point. We just got back from California and I was shooting landscape photography. We're not talking about sports, but I would often bracket five shots when shooting into the sun. And those five shots would take five seconds to clear, but I shoot more than once every five seconds. I always take multiple shots just to make sure that I got it. And I would end up with a buffer stack 20, 30 deep and that would take 30 seconds to clear with the very fastest SD card. And I would want to go in and just switch out of bracketing, change my focusing mode, or start recording a video because I would see something cool. Oh, I got to grab a video of this. Can't record video when it's buffering. And I missed so many shots. I ended up pulling out my phone and recording video with my phone instead of using my big camera because the camera was useless when it's buffering. So you know what my experience was shooting with the a7R III? I was concerned that I would miss the megapixels in the landscapes. And I thought, dang it, maybe Tony's right because you're gonna be shooting 60 megapixels. Maybe I'll want another big print and I'm gonna see the difference and be upset. Do you know how easy it is to shoot a panorama? Yeah, and it kind of produces better results anyway. It kind of, it takes about five seconds. I just go boom, 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 boom. You load those photos into Lightroom, you select them, you hit panorama, and it takes a few minutes. It's easy. I didn't miss the extra megapixels. And I'll say we were shooting side by side, and I looked at our pictures, and I, I didn't see that my pictures were sharper or more detailed. They looked very similar. Now, let me say, when I first got this camera, I tested it in our lab environment, and stuff was noticeably sharper. Not maybe 25% sharper. Yeah. That's but pretty I, sharp. I didn't see that in the real world. I didn't see it much. I mean, if you really zoomed in and pixel peeped, I could see some difference. But for me, not enough to justify the switch. Again, I do miss some things about like the body updates and everything. I was really excited about those, but uh, the, the speed is important to me. I think they could fix that by either letting you shoot fewer megapixels or by changing the SD slot to an XQD. Because I think in theory that should write twice as fast and that would solve the problems. But I know that they're already cramming these bodies like so tightly that they can't fit anything else in. So I don't know that they could physically fit in an XQD card. So here's the other point where I'm very impatient. Um, loading my pictures onto my computer. Yeah. I 
don't like waiting for things. So I took 100 pictures of the same thing to make sure all the lighting was the same, same memory cards in each camera. Loading 100 pictures into Lightroom on the A7R4 took six minutes and 30 seconds. And that's rendering previews as well. And the A7R3 took five minutes. Not a huge difference for 100 pictures, but I usually will take, I guess it depends how many people usually take, but I usually take like 500 or more depending on what I'm taking pictures of. Mm -hmm. We have new MacBook Pros and I decided I would process my pictures on the plane back. Yeah. It's not just the extra time, I had plenty of time to kill, but it completely wrecked the battery because everything just requires more processing oh. power. So that meant we had, you know, a six hour flight back from San Francisco and my laptop battery was dead within the hour. Like it didn't, it barely got through rendering of the previews and then I just had to shut down. That was a really sad story. Yeah, <laughs> I hate it was that. really frustrating. Okay, so here's the other thing. So I started to doubt my decision to not switch because they were supposed to improve the IAF and the autofocusing in the A7R4. Um, but when we did testing on that, we didn't see a noticeable improvement. Sometimes that did better. Sometimes the A7R3 did better. Mm -hmm. So I can't justify the switch there either. So to switch, I'd have to trade this in, pay $1,000 more, get some benefits with the body and design and stuff that I like, but then spend more time waiting for that camera, not getting that much better results. Did the portrait shots look any sharper? I didn't see a difference. In the studio, I didn't see a difference. Does anybody want their portraits to be 60 megapixel sharp anyway? I don't want to, and you keep being like, hey, let's shoot in 4K, let's shoot in 8K, let's do a million megapixels, and I'm just like, I'm a human with scan, I don't want that. Maybe if you're doing product photography or something, and you really need it super sharp, and you want to blow up the photo to be huge, Okay. My favorite feature when this was new was the 240 megapixel, like super stacking. I used it over and over again in California and it succeeded 0% of the time, none of the time. Every single one of my pixel shifted pictures showed weird hashtags from the movement either of the earth or of buildings. This is steady tripod taking it over and over again. Never worked. Did fill up lots of storage space, did fill up my memory cards, did buffer the camera like crazy. It's just, it's not a useful feature, so it's not an advantage. Why are you standing behind your switch? Okay, to me it's like if you're buying a car and you go up for the really big eight cylinder engine because you think you're gonna have fun with it and you yeah. know like, okay, the mileage isn't gonna be as good, it's gonna be a pain on the maintenance, but it's really gonna be worth it. And then you spend all your days just stuck in traffic and you never even realize any benefit from it. You're like, why am I bothering with all the downsides and not realizing any of the upsides? That's what it feels like. I, I would be totally fine picking up the A7R3 and I didn't start this discussion this way, but you, you talked me out of it. Like, I'm gonna keep my A7R4 yeah. because it's not worth me even setting up another camera. But if I had it to do over again, I probably would just buy another A7R3. Okay, I wanna really like blow your mind. <laughs> when we were doing the, the testing for the autofocusing, I wanted another camera in the mix, so I put in the Canon R and I really enjoyed it. And so I think if, they get dual card slots, which I heard is rumored to be coming out this year. I think I might be trying a Canon switch. That would be nice because we film our videos with Canon. That's what we're filming with here. And we didn't travel with the Canon because we didn't want to carry an extra camera, but everybody complained that the autofocus on your Sony that you filmed with was bad. And the Canon autofocus for video is much better. I also just feel like that's kind of my responsibility as a reviewer. Like I lived with this camera for a long time. I feel like I know it really well. I gave it a really good shot. I, I worked with that camera enough. I gave Sony's a good shot. I like them. I like Sony's. I'm not switching because I hate them. But I think it's time to try Canon. They did software updates. Their autofocusing was impressing me when I was using it. There's things that I've always liked about the Canon system. Their glass is really good. And so, um, yeah, if I can get those dual card slots, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I've also been really impressed with the Canon lenses and the general handling of the EOS R since the firmware update. It was garbage when it first came out, but it's great. It's so harsh. Now. I wouldn't say it was like garbage, but it was yeah, good. It was pretty frustrating to <laughs> yeah. use, yeah. I don't know. I almost asked you how you feel about our decisions, but I don't I don't think I wanna know. Well prove us wrong. Like show me some real world like landscape or portrait pictures where the A7R4 produced noticeably better pictures than the A7R3 at $1,000 cheaper. Like why is it worth the extra storage space, the extra processing time, the battery being dead faster? Why is it worth that? Yeah, and why haven't you bought our book that's 31% off? 
with the coupon code LOVE69. If you're buying all this expensive gear, you should at least buy a book for $6 and learn how to use it and learn the art of photography. Does the coupon apply to our Lightroom Classic Photoshop books about the art and science of photography? Um, yeah, sure. We'll do everything. What about our Lightroom presets? Yeah, sure. This what about the professional portrait video training? Yeah, I'll throw that in too because I know it's really hard to shop for men for Valentine's Day and this is the perfect gift for the nerd in your life. Okay, and if they don't like it, money back guarantee, right? Yeah. Sometimes people have returned stuff because they bought something and then we reviewed a piece of gear that they bought and they were mad that we didn't like the gear that they liked. Oh, that's so and messed up, that like, happens? Yeah, they just want to take their money back from us so we don't get their money. Oh. Oh, mean. Is there anything else that we should add? Did you say subscribe? No, I don't care. Nobody ever listens. Don't unsubscribe. How about that? <laughs> Let's compromise.